Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you some exciting watercolor art supplies that I purchased over the last couple of months. So if you are interested, then stay tuned and keep watching. And before we begin, I would like to remind you that there is still a giveaway going on on my channel and if you would like to get your chance to get this 5ml tube of Daniel Smith watercolors called Moonglow, then make sure that you check the description box down below. And now let's get started. Let's start with paper. And the first thing I would like to show that I purchased recently is this Fabriano sketchbook. The thing is that some time ago I started getting more into drawing and I bought some sheets of Fabriana paper and I believe that this is their student line. I'm not sure, but it says Academia on it. And here, yeah, like this, and here it says Academia as well. So I believe it's exactly the same paper, but in the form of sketchbook. And I just liked it so much that I decided to get one for me as well. I like the size, this is approximately A4 size really like that it has soft cover i don't know but i just love sketchbooks with soft covers i always go for them when i have a chance and yeah it just looks nice it's white but not you know blindingly white so with very nice texture texture and a great feel so i'm very happy to start drawing in it next i also got these two sketchbooks by hannah muller and to be honest first when I saw them the first time in the shop, I didn't quite understand if it was the same sketchbook, but with the new cover. And the thing is that I already have one sketchbook from Hannah it's this one, and I do not really like it, to be honest. I mean, you know, sometimes paper works for you and other times paper works against you, so this is I think one of those times when paper works against you. It's not like it's terrible, it can hold the water pretty well, it doesn't buckle that much, but I cannot say that I really enjoy the process of painting in it. And I'm not really a big fan of this type of cover. But anyway, then I saw them side by side and I realized that this one is a student line because this is just uh, usual paper, while here it is 100% cotton paper. And I also really like the selection of sizes. They had a really big selection. So I think anyone could find what they like most. I'm really looking forward to using this too. Maybe let me open one of them so we can take a look how it looks inside. That looks and feels very nice. A small line from the packaging. Oh, this is great. I, I really like it. It's made in a similar style as this sketchbook. And yet it is very, very different. I mean, the feel is amazing. I like this one so much more just by the feel because this one has really been annoying me for some reason. I do not know why, but I'm not a fan. I'm sorry. But this one, I can see that it's just great. And I'll see if I can remove those lines from the packaging, but it doesn't really matter to me. If the sketchbook is well used, I think it gets dirty anyway, right? So let me open. Oh, that's pretty nice. Okay, let me see. Yeah, and I can see that you can make a painting already right on the first page. Because I believe this is uh, also watercolor paper that was glued. Very nice texture. Let me see if you can see it as well. So I would say that this is a medium grain. It's not hot press, I wouldn't call it hot press, but it's definitely not rough. 
and it's hard to say just by the touch but i believe they are the same on both sides but you know you need to paint and to test it and only then i will know for sure if this is a two-sided one or not but yeah so far so good can lie very flat there is also a bookmark so i'm very very excited to start using it and then i also got this and this is the first time i saw anything like it and it says that this is a visual journal for mixed media but it is also a 100 percent cotton paper which is amazing i do not know if this paper is different from the traditional strathmore sketchbooks for mixed media with 100 percent cotton paper but it looks great to be honest i even want to leave this one because i find it so inspirational but here's the actual cover and it is spiral bound and i would say that the texture is hot pressed because it's pretty smooth and you can see probably right away that this is a slightly off white paper which is perfectly fine with me oh i'm so excited to start painting it and I got a big format, not necessarily because I want to make big paintings in it, but just, you know, to have this free space to experiment and not being afraid of ruining the sketchbook. I'm planning to paint here with watercolors, gouache, maybe make some collage if it gets to it. Just use it as a visual journal, just like it says on the cover. And I'm very excited to start using it. Then I also got a bunch of miscellaneous items. And let me open this. This one is a ceramic palette. I do have a couple of those. But they're just not quite good enough. Let me see if I can open it. Because one of those that I have, it's very shallow. And another one is very deep, which makes it uncomfortable. But this one looked to be just fine. Perfect size, not too big, not too small. Just a standard ceramic palette that I really wanted to use because there are some of the paints that I'm not planning to put in pants, but use them straight from the tube. So I think this one will work just perfect for it. The next item I got is uh, a water brush from Pimtel and I already have one of those and I have it since probably I started working or started painting with watercolors but the one I have is medium and it's just a bit too big especially because I like tr uh, I like taking the water brush when uh, I travel and then I take some very small sketchbooks with me and uh, the medium like size is just too big for me so finally I saw where they were selling just fine because I saw them in a set of three, but I didn't need three new water brushes. I just wanted Pentel, but in a smaller size. So now this is a fine size and of course it might appear to be too small, but I will give it a go and see how it works for me. And this item is just for fun and this is just some rubber stamps because i thought that maybe some of the pieces they can be mixed media pieces that i paint something and then just add a stamp oh they're packaged very nicely and this are just such lovely generic stamps it's just joy peace and happiness and i think this is something what we could always add on our paintings or I don't know in the journal or anywhere I just thought I just thought that uh, they will get used a lot and the next thing is this empty palette from Schminke oh, and this is so nice such a lovely quality and what I actually realized as soon as I picked it up is that it is a little bit thinner than your traditional tin. Let me show you. Like you see, this is the standard tin. And so let's check from the side. Can you see? This one's much thinner, so it feels much slicker. 
and I thought that it would be great maybe to take this one with me from time to time. Yeah, and pretty standard inside, nothing revolutionary here. Some kind of instructions, I suppose. I will take a look at it later. The only disadvantage that I can see right away in the stain is that these edges, they are actually very sharp. I mean, seriously. Like, let me show you another one. You see? This is how the edge is made here. So it's, I mean, you can't cut yourself. I think it's this one. But here, I actually think it could be possible. So if you're planning to get it for your kids, then probably you shouldn't do it. And maybe you should be careful as well. I'll see if I can do anything about it. Maybe sand it a little bit with the sandpaper, but we'll see. It's not like it's super bad, but I know that I'm going to be cautious because things happen, you know. But other than that, it's very cute. And I'm really looking forward to filling it up and seeing how it works out for me. And then this, this is, as you can see, is from Ikea. I recently saw this small pouch there and I just fell in love with it. I think it's gonna be so great because look, there's slight width to it, maybe a couple of centimeters. And that's just the perfect size because you know, I really like having art supplies with me when I travel. Even though, to be honest, I travel outside of my home, very, very rare, but According to my logic, it's better to have something with you than not to have it. I don't know. But anyway, that's why I thought this would be a perfect container for the most minimal kit that I could take with me. Because I could easily put a water brush here, just a small sketchbook or maybe just even some pieces of paper and a palette and that's it. Or maybe even some uh, loose tubes of colors there if needed. So. And uh, if you're curious, then maybe subscribe to my channel and uh, in the future videos, I will let you know exactly what goes in this pouch for my next travel. And now let's move to something very exciting, which is brushes. Let me open this for you. Here we go. So I've got five new brushes. So the first brush is uh, just a rigger because I have one rigger with uh, natural hair and it's wonderful. To be honest, it's so wonderful that I'm just scared to use it. So that's why I wanted to pick up another rigger from Synthetics, maybe a little bit more durable one that I could take with me on the travels because I really like making small details. And then I also thought that because it is a little bit sturdier, it would work perfectly with the gouache when I make details. So, and let me just show you a little bit without uh, shaking. This is a Da Vinci Synthetics number one. And then the next brush is uh, a silicon brush and I uh, picked it up only for applying masking fluid because I use right now another silicon brush for it and it works very well for me, but it is a little bit too big. So I decided that this one will work just great. And then finally, finally I came across Princeton Neptune brushes. So here they are. Oh, they look so, so beautiful. I'm very excited to start using them. And I really hope that I like them because I just right away picked three sizes. Number six for maybe smaller sketches, number eight and number 10. I would have probably taken number 12 for really big paintings or like relatively big paintings, but they didn't have it. So I decided to settle for number 10 as well. And maybe, maybe let's try out this one. I just really want to see how it feels. 
I have a watcher right next to me. Okay, it seems to be very soft, yet rather springy. And I know this is not the best test ever <laughs> right now, just me trying a, a brush on my hand. And I'll definitely uh, test them out much more, but I just wanted to see how it feels, how soft they are, how, I don't know, movable they are. And uh, so far, so good. I'm really excited to start testing them out in practice. And now let's move to the most exciting part, which are paints. I have picked up this set because it was such a good deal. I think it was less than $20 and for five 10 milliliter tubes of Sinalia watercolors. And I wanted to try them out for a while now because in the beginning, I wasn't interested in Sinalia colors at all because I watched the reviews and it was said that they're not particularly bright. They're very nice to work with, but they're not particularly bright. So I thought, okay, because I like really bright colors. I decided to go with the other brands of paint, but now my approach to painting changes in a way, or maybe just develops. And I would like to say that it grows. And I got much more into painting in many, many layers. And this is what everybody has repeated, that Snellier are perfect for layering. And even though I'm not a botanical painter, but I really thought that it would be great to try them out and see how them and me work together, you know? If they make it easier for me to paint or if it's more difficult. So yeah, anyway, I'm very curious to give them a go. sure would be the best way to open them. It feels very nice. And I don't know, would you like me to make a thorough review of this test pack? Because actually I didn't see that many on YouTube. So if you would find it interesting, then please make sure to leave a comment down below. And then I'll definitely make uh, some kind of video about the paints and what I think about them and what I think about the set in particular. So I think I'll have to tear it. Huh? Oh well. Oh, and by the way, I can tell you right away, the colors that are there are lemon yellow, bright red. Oh, and by the way, bright red is one of the reasons why I wanted this set, because I saw the tube of it separately and just looked amazing. Then ultramarine deep, Chinese orange and paints gray. So theoretically, this with these five colors, it should be possible to paint anything. Oh, that looks very nice. Ooh. Oh, this looks great. Just such a nice touch with all those pigments. Okay, some history. And I guess some information about how they're made. Oh, Sinele pastel. Oh. That looks amazing. And then they're packaged here. And I will most likely throw this one out and just keep those tubes. I don't think anything's going to happen to them. But it does give an extra luxury feel to the paints. Oh, they look so very nice. And if I open them. At that red I can already see it's gonna be amazing I am so very excited to start 
playing around with them. And then there's also this Chinese orange. Very interesting. So yeah, very exciting. And in addition to in addition to this pack, I also got this one little pen, and this is also Sinalier, and this is Taylor Turquoise. And I picked it up because I saw quite a few people just raving about how beautiful this color is. So I'm very, very excited to give it a go and yeah, see how it works for me because I love teal and turquoise colors. So yeah, I really hope that this, this will turn out to be a nice set and I will use it a lot. And then I got this bunch. <laughs> And these are also watercolor paints. Very weird boxes. But let's start. Okay, let's start with this one because this is a, a tube of Van Gogh color, oxide black. And you know, I was in such a rush actually that I didn't even ha have a chance to double check. But I believe this is the color that makes other colors granulate. I mean, that this is so granulating that when mixed with other colors, this is how they get uh, those dusk green and dusk rose. But the art shop was completely out of those colors because I really wanted to get dusk green. So I decided to pick up this one and I might be wrong. <laughs> I didn't check. Ooh, okay, and now it is exploding on me. Okay. Just a second. I have this little one here. Ooh. It didn't happen. It didn't happen with Sinalia. Have you noticed? They were just there, but this one. But this is also the same what I saw happening with the Daniel Smith paints. Just move it from here. Okay, and now that I open, okay, I have to hold the brush. Ah, I'm all in paint now. So I believe next time it's gonna be quite an adventure to open it. But anyway, now that we opened it, why don't we test it? If this is the one or not, and I guess it will be simple. If it does granulate, then that's the one. <laughs> Let me see. And by the way, now I'm testing the brush at the same time and it feels very good. I believe it is the one. You see the granulation is very, very strong. Let me show you. Very, very pretty. So I'll be mixing it with the other watercolors and I'll see if it works or not. And then maybe let me make some more tests with this brush. Well, I can definitely make a very thin details. Well, it doesn't spread that much. So maybe it's not entirely what I would pick for floral paintings. But for details, I think it could be quite amazing. I, I don't know what I'm painting there, just just ignore it. I'm just playing around. It 
seems to be very very nice okay now just let me wash my hands and the last but not the least here it is Mimery blue watercolors I'm very curious about these paints they're supposed to be pure in a way that there's only pigment and the binder without any other additives but I'll be honest I haven't researched it that much yet but if this is the case I thought that it would be great to try them out and I just really felt the inspiration to discover more watercolors because even though I love for example Daniel Smith paints they don't always work out the way I would like them to so I thought I will try something new so I picked those colors for a new palette I don't think that all of them will get in there because I had some doubts about what to choose so I'll play around with them and see what kind of mixes they make and what works best and what not and then I'll select some of them for the palette that I will most likely put into this Schmincke palette that I have just shown you so I think this is going to be the new home so I really hope that it is easy to rewet them from the pen but I will test it out as well before I proceed and yeah then I'll see whether I like them or not oh and by the way this specific color the name of it dragon's blood to be honest I picked this color just because of the name I read it and I was like okay I have to have it because who would want to have a color called dragon's blood in their palette right so yeah and uh, I'm not gonna show you all the colors because I will make a custom palette I'm pretty sure so make sure that you subscribe because then it will be in one of my next videos and then I'll make the swatches and tell you what is working and what's not and yeah what I think about them in general this is it for today I really hope you enjoyed the video and if you did then make sure that you give it a thumbs up and if you're curious about what my favorite art supplies are or at least what they were in 2021 then make sure that you watch the next video the link will appear on the screen but for now thank you and see you in my next video bye